Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and first official guitar lesson. Uh, my name is Predrag Simović, as you already know from the channel name. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you a jazz guitar lick in the style of Charlie Parker. So without further ado, let's get going. And we are back. So, Charlie Parker, bebop music. This is something that every guitar player who wants to play jazz and loves to listen to jazz music should already know or should have a listen to. Uh, Charlie Parker was famous, uh, basically his technique was out of this world and still is. There's a lot of saxophone players that cannot match what he played, you know, uh, 50 plus years ago. And uh, what he basically did was he took arpeggios, chromaticism, bebop scales, and he combined it all into like amazing improvising tools where basically every time he was improvising, his improvisations became well-known standards and melodies. So uh, when I composed this lick in style of Charlie Parker, I was thinking about all these things that he was doing, right? And without further ado, I'm going to now demonstrate one by one. I will start with harmony first and then with melody and discuss what basically happened with this lick. I hope you enjoy it. So we start with chords. First chord is F major nine. You can also play F major 7, it's basically a major triad with a 9 on top or 7th on top. I'm using string sets 5, 4, 3 and 2, meaning strings A, D, G and B. And uh, I'm mostly playing chords on these string sets, right? So what I'm doing is green style comping, which is basically just downbeats simulating a quarter note pulse, right? This is a great bebop, big band era type of backing where you're just, without a drummer or a bass player, you're basically giving a solid groove, yeah? So if I'm going two beats of F major 9, then I'm adding passing diminished chord, which is basically, uh, diminished chords come from dominant 7 chord families, so this chord, F sharp diminished, is basically like playing D7, right? Just without D in the bass, right? Actually using E flat or F sharp or A or C in the bass, right? That's a trick, substitution trick. And the reason why I picked this, it's great for bass player and for guitarist. When you're playing, you're now hearing the chromatic line there. But if I played normal chords without diminished chords, it would be something like this. Then I would play D7, then I would play G minor, then I would play E7, and then I would play A minor, right? But when you add the chromatic passing, uh, you know, bass line going ascending, chromatically it sounds much more exciting, right? It's voice leading. Okay, and from this point on, basically what happened, the chords are F major 9, then goes F sharp diminished 7 or E flat diminished 7, etc. G minor 7, G sharp diminished 7, and then A minor 7. Okay? After this chord, we are basically doing something called cycle. Uh, we are using cycles that are used in jazz and classical music and in popular music as well. And I'm just using here cycle 4, yeah? Cycle 4 is basically using a cycle of perfect uh, fourths. And uh, if this is A minor 7, now I'm going to D, which is basically the dominant here, D7, then G minor 7, and then C7, ending in F. And then in the end I just end it on F6-9 voicing, yeah? Which is used in gypsy jazz a lot, in a big band era a lot, you know? So again, this is the chord progression. Now, there is an anticipation at the end of beat 4, instead of playing on a downbeat this F major, you're basically going 1, yeah, 1, 2, and 
or if we are counting correctly, this is basically three, four, and. So you're going like this. All these are downstrokes. Uh, I'm muting strings as I'm playing, so you're not basically holding chords. If you hold there, the sound is going to carry on. It's going to sound like this. Totally different sound, right? But it's supposed to be staccato, right? Okay, that basically completes the chord progression. Please, if you have questions about the harmony part, uh, feel free to leave comment and ask the questions. I'll do my best to respond as soon as possible, okay? Now we are going to move on to melodic part of the lick. I hope you enjoy it so far. And we are back. And for the melodic part, uh, basically lick consists of two parts. First part is using arpeggios, inversions of arpeggios. Uh, for those of you that don't know, arpeggio is basically describing a chord. Chord is three or more notes. When we are playing together, for example, F major chord, F, A, C. When you play together, that's harmonically, right? If you play it melodically, like strumming, that's an arpeggio, right? So what I'm doing in the first part of the lick is basically I'm playing inversions of the harmony that's going underneath. So over F major 9 chord, I'm playing second inversion where the fifth is in the bass, right? I'm playing second inversion of F major triad, and I'm playing following. F, C, F, A. Remember this pattern, because I'm using all the arpeggios, except the last one, uh, our second inversion. So I'm playing this. That's all second inversion arpeggios. F major arpeggio, followed by D. This is a root inversion, by the way. And then second inversion, G minor. And then I have E major arpeggio here. Or you can go E7. And then the second part of the lick starts. So again, I'll play it slowly. F major arpeggio, first inversion. You can see it in notation and tab provided. Then D major root inversion starting from the third yeah then g minor arpeggio starting from the root down back to the root and third so and now we have a triplet happening here and then doing the e to d this is e7 arpeggio right So when you connect it, that's the first part of the lick, right? Second part, and by the way, the chords for this are in the background. That's basically how far we went. And now we are going to do a lick or a line from Donnelly that's modified, Charlie Parker's Donnelly. And he basically does it at the end of the turnaround over A flat. He does it here, sounding like this. Right? What I did here, I transposed the lick to F major instead of A flat major, and I changed it around. I added some more bebop elements to it, believe it or not. So I started from the C, basically going descending F major scale, yeah? C, B flat, A, G, and now doing voice leading to F sharp, because the next chord is D7, yeah? So we went here, and now A minor, over A minor 7, I'm playing this, then D7, I'm doing the voice leading part. This is typical bebop line, where you're like playing third and a flat 9, this is Charlie Parker all the way, you know? He does this in many, many inversions, even like... Like, you can hear this sound over and over, right? So, 
I'm just going descending, right? And now I'm changing direction over G minor seven. I'm playing a B flat major seven arpeggio. It's known as superimposing. You basically get a G minor nine sound doing this. Root inversion of B flat major seven. And now over C7, I'm playing altered sound. I'm going sharp five, which is G sharp, major third E, flat nine, sorry, sharp nine, which is basically D sharp. And then I'm playing chromatically B note, which is basically, does not belong to C7 chord, right? It's, it's a major seven, but I'm using it to approach C note and then play F. This is typical Charlie Parker, you know, approach pattern, uh, where basically what I'm trying to do and doing here is I'm accenting C and F and ending my phrase on the upbeat. This is very bebop style, right? So when I play this together, right, this part, dun, 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 right? That's the bebop part, right? and you even hear me accenting with a pick, right? So the whole line slowly goes like this. And then I did it like octave down more, right? One more octave down. And I played here F7 sharp nine, and I had a sharp 11 even here. And then finally ended on the chord, which is basically Lydian dominant style, F7 sharp 11, right? This is melodic minor sound, by the way. C melodic minor. You hear it. So, the whole line sounds like this. And the chords again. Welcome back. This is a final chapter of this uh, lesson and I would just like to give you some hints and pointers about the whole lesson in general and how you should be approaching uh, your learning and studying material. So as a guitar instructor and teacher for over 20 years uh, of experience, you know, teaching at Berklee College of Music as well as other private schools in Boston, uh, doing online guitar lessons, uh, teaching privately students all over the world, uh, my experience has taught me that the more ways that you find to present a material or understand material, the faster and better you're going to improve. So when you are learning from this video, I would like you to think, why did I, for example, pick this chord progression? What is happening in this chord progression? You know, does it exist in some jazz standard? I'm going to give you an answer right away. Yes, it exists in Have You Met Miss Jones? So what's happening there? Okay, it's an ascending chromatic bass line. How does that work in your favor? Do you need to practice? Who did great over ascending chromatic bass lines? Charlie Parker and John Coltrane are the two guys that like, when you hear their solos, they are doing this all over the place. So those two artists, Michael Brecker, of course, for everything, right? So if you listen to three of them, you're going to pick up on this sound of chromaticism in the harmony, right? And in the melody as well. So uh, this is, for example, first thing you should be thinking about. What's happening in the harmony? How can I adapt this harmony to music that I'm doing? Or if I'm a jazz guitarist, beginner, intermediate, advanced, how does this work into my vocabulary? Second thing is voice leading, right? In the, in the voicings, I didn't play like you know, jumping around the guitar fretboard, you could hear the forward motion in the bass. Right? It's very nicely put. It's like, almost like it's played on piano, right? So this is about harmony. Then you start asking more questions. What else is happening in harmony? Uh, are there some secondary dominant chords? For example, why does E7 chord or G sharp diminished seven 
work in Q of F major, you know, and how can you apply this in your other repertoire, your original music and songs, right? So once you get answers to these questions, you then move on and keep asking more questions. Is this in the key? Is there something outside of the key? How can I use this sound in my solos? What do I like to do here, etc.? So this is about harmony, right? Second thing is about melody. So if you like the first part of the lick, which is basically chords being arpeggiated, then what you need to be doing is take chord progressions that are much easier than this one, by the way. This one is very evolved bebop style chord progression. What you want to be doing is taking something like a single chord vamp and then just throughout the guitar fretboard doing all the inversions of some sort of uh, sequence and pattern. So for example, if you got a F major chord in the background, you want to take root inversion and maybe everywhere or whatever pattern you choose, yeah? Third string and second string, right? Whatever string set you're practicing, whatever, right? I'm just giving you examples, like, uh, and I'm doing this without ever looking, obviously, because I want to get the point across. So uh, what you want to do is do it with a click. You want to also practice through bottle, meaning no click, no backing track. And then if you really, really want to get, you know, the chops down, record just the bass note. And over that, improvise using your triads. This is something that when you hear music of Michael Brecker, he's often not even having, you know, drums or anybody. He's just doing rubato soloing and you hear every single harmony, right? This is the path that you want to be taking, in my opinion, if you want to get really, really good on your instrument, you want to practice your triads, all inversions, all positions, all string sets, and you want to practice different permutations. Permutations is basically different ways of arpeggiating or playing uh, an arpeggio, right? It could be one, three, five, it could be one, five, three, you know, it could be three, five, one, or five, three, one, right? Like all these have different sounds and that just in the in one place and one octave, right? Now you can transpose this F up an octave and now you get, right? Right? Whatever, like so many different permutations that you can do. And all this is going to give you new melodic vocabulary for you to improvise, play melodies and be creative on your instrument, right? So if you like that about the first part of the line, then you just practice over whatever chord progression you want and you start unlocking these triads, right? Second thing is if you like the second part of the lick, which is basically linear playing, meaning note after note, straight eight notes, and it's going either up or down, and there is no leaps or jumps that are happening, unlike in arpeggios, there is more leaps and jumps, right? We are using thirds or, or larger intervals when we are playing arpeggios, while when we are playing linearly, we are playing like seconds maximum, like a minor third, you know, jump. So here you hear it. This is actually arpeggio with leaps, right? And this is also mixed. Right? So if you like this as a line, you should keep practicing not only descending, but also ascending. So maybe you start A minor sound, D7, G minor, C7, right? These are all altered functions, right? So if I go... This is basically playing a pentatonic or a one, two, three, five kind of a thing going ascending and descending, I'm using arpeggio, right? I'm com combining the two. We spoke about arpeggios being with leaps. Now we are talking how this is basically combining the two, right? And you get that kind of a sound. Right? You hear it. I'm describing the chord progression, right? Three, dominant of the two, two, five, one. Right? Uh, you can also do linear stuff. So if you're going now up, you can go, for example, up. 
right? I'm just playing on one string, <laughs> but you, you get the idea. You can even start lower, right? If you want to start on A here. This is over A minor. Now you got some altered tensions, really cool sound. Right? flat 9 and sharp 9, pretty cool, with a major third, Michael Brecker style, and then you get, which is basically G minor sound, 9, flat third, fourth, and a fifth, and now you get tensions over C7, you get sharp 9, third, sharp 11, you can play here fifth or even altered fifth, right? So you can go and then end on the third, right? So that's that line. I'm just playing linearly through the chord changes. And you get this. It's very similar, almost identical concept towards what I was doing in the second part of the lick. I was going descending. But here I was now showing you how to practice ascending, right? And you can do that from any chord tone in the chord. You can practice from tensions, not only chord tones. You can have rests, breaks in your phrases. It doesn't have to be constant eight notes. Although bebop music does have very fluent and uh, fast eight note kind of lines, right? You want to practice definitely constant eight note lines. But if you want to drift apart from bebop and use just jazz and modern sound like fusion style you definitely want to have breaks in between you want to have interval jumps and things like that so this is me doing another nine plus minutes of just like helping you out how to take the most out of lessons right this is something that i do in private lessons in schools this is something that i did at berkeley college of music in boston and this is something honestly that i haven't found online enough of this is why i'm making now these lessons and hopefully you guys enjoy them uh, share them with people who can benefit from this and hopefully you know in some time channel will grow and uh, there will be more people who are interested in in this type of content so i really hope you enjoy this lesson and i look forward to your feedback comments questions and uh, i'll do my best to contribute more to the YouTube communi community and like online community overall with more lesson materials. This was Predrag Simovic for Predrag Simovic Music YouTube channel. See you around guys.